Okay, so I'm gonna start with the first talk of the arts gone. Um, uh, this will be an introduction to Radar for Humans. I decided to call it that way. And um, before we begin, I know many of you don't know from, from I, so that's a very basic. I'm a math and computer science student, and I'm president of a an ethical hacking association called Hacking Yure, and I'm also an art con collaborator for last year and also this year. Uh, I think what is more important that who I am is who am I not. I'm not a reverse engineering professional. I am not a uh, radar expert at all, and I am not a radar tool developer at least yet. So keep that in mind. <clears throat> so who are you? How many of you are students? Please raise your hand. Okay. Uh, I guess many of you are working on some kind of infosec related field. So please raise your hand. Yeah, the most of you. So. Yeah, in this in this conference, maybe seems like a silly question, but does anyone doesn't know Radar? <laughs> and okay, how many of you actually use Radar? Yeah, that's cool. In many of the conferences I ask that, it's like, well, maybe. Okay, so what are the preliminaries to take into account for this talk? Uh, first of all, who is this talk for? Um, basically, I made this talk for newcomers to Radar 2 and with the aim of being a quick reference of the basics. And I think people who will appreciate more that is here in place are the people who did not attend the training that it's maybe not that exposed to Radar 2. And so why this talk? The most important thing is that I talked with Pancake and we said, okay, so do your interesting stuff. I will be the guy who makes the intro. The, the, other, the other thing is, okay, I want to I wanna make a talk introducing Radar, but in a different way. As I said before, I'm not a Radar 2 expert. Uh, I'm neither a reverse engineer professional, but I would like to, to make a talk making some basic explanation of basic stuff, but a very basic user. So I hope that will help many people. And of course, this talk is going, it's going to be recorded and it will be uploaded for the internet, so there will be many people who can appreciate it, I guess, and I hope. This will be the agenda I will be following today. So first of all, I'll be making a quick introduction to what is and what can we do with Radar 2. Well, we will see some basic usage, and they, then I will go for more features and some mids, and we'll give you some resources if you want to know more and learn on your own. So in a nutshell, there is a lot of words here, but Radar is a free and open source reverse engineering framework. It's written poorly in C. It's a rewrite indeed from the first Radar tool. And it's fu funny thing is that it's built from, from scratch without third party libraries, so it can run, uh, it runs without any dependencies. It's portable, it's scriptable, it's extensible via plugins. It has a release um, every six weeks more or less. And it has a really great community, as I'm sure you know if you are here. And of course, obviously, I'm sure you know if you are here too, that there is the Articon, which is the annual congress held in Barcelona in early September every year. And so what can Radar do? This is obviously a non-exhaustive list. It can do lots of more things. You can disassemble binaries of several architectures and operating systems. You can analyze code, data reference structures. You can debug, make some tracing. It can be used for exploiting. Uh, for exploiting uh, assistance. You can do also binary manipulation, code injection, patching, bin diffing. It's also pretty useful for forensic, which was indeed the, the main purpose of Radar on, on its beginning, although it's now a little bit, well, it has to be rethinked, I think. But it can do a bunch of things if you are making manual forensic stuff, like you can mount file systems, you can detect partitions, you can also make some data carving of some weird file format or so, you can define it by yourself and you can search for them. Uh, it's also pretty useful to extract information of binaries or just some sections of the binary. And you can extract metrics from that and make classification. And uh, there's people that is also using for making kernel analysis and some debugging at very low level. Okay. Uh, this is what Radar has support for. I'm not expecting you to read that. So basically, it runs everywhere and supports everything. Uh, 
almost everything and almost everywhere, I would say. There are, I mean, where is the new gadget in the market? Uh, there is someone, usually Pancake Xvilka, who they ported to Radare in just a couple of weeks. So if you have some gadget that is not included, maybe it's included and it is not documented. It's like the most probably thing. So we're going to go just right to the to uh, funny stuff. So how can you install Radare? Uh, the best way, the recommended way, and I think the easiest way is just clone the GitHub repository. You will have the latest version. Well, unless you make the pull an hour before, you are probably outdated in that case. But that's it. Clone the repo, uh, go to the directory, and you execute install the set, sh, and that's it. And when you have the, the, the repo cloned, you don't have to make pull every time you want to install it again. You just run that script, and it will pull automatically and install everything. Um, if you're working with, with Windows or Mac, you can check for instruction, installation instruction, and you can build also by yourself at radar.re. Re. There is all the explanations you need. There. So yeah, keep calm. Use Artifact from Git, please. Um, I mean, there are, there are many people um, complaining about something that doesn't work or opening issues that OK, this feature doesn't make what I want, and they are using a two-year version, which is, we, we are not giving support for that. I mean, we have a problem with some um, distros that are not updating their packages, but you can use it from Git. You will make us and yourself uh, a big favor. So that's a quick review of the main tools included. There are quite a few more, but there are the the most important, I think, or at least the most, the most used, there is Raven 2. Those, those tools are all um, distributed at single binaries. So you can execute them. And you have Raven 2, which is for extracting information of binaries. You have Rax 2, which is um, a base converter, but it also uh, works like a kind of simple calculator between different bases. It's really useful. You have Rax 2 for all kind of crypto and hashing stuff. We have Radith 2 for bin diffing, Rafine for make searches, Ra RASM. Uh, RASM is like an um, assembler and disassembler of single instructions. So you can, um, now one moment, you can see if uh, some of codes are, are matched with some of the experts in any architecture you want. Then there is R2PM, which is the, the, the own package management system of Radaria. If you make a plugin or so, you can define just a simple file to include that in R2PM. And yeah, you just call R2PM install, and that will be it. And of course, Radar2, which is the, the main tool, which wraps the, the other single binaries. And it's a shell, interactive shell, with all that um, functionality and many more. So I will be going just to the very basic usage. I hope everyone can get it, and it will be a good reference. <clears throat> so can we can spawn a shell, an R2 shell? Uh, first of all, taking care that R2 is just a sim leak for Radar2. So it will work that way just fine. The, the most common way to open a file without any other parameters is, OK, just make R2 and append the, the file path. Then we have some useful modes that are really, really used, which are the right mode. By default in Radar, you, can, you cannot modify your patch, the binary you're working with. So if you want to make modifications uh, that are being stored, on this you have to open with write mode. Um, please don't play with write mode on BNLS or system binaries. Uh, it can be quite a mess. Then a set, we will talk a little bit later, but uh, if you want to make uh, debugging, uh, native debugging with Radare, you, you have to open it with the flag. And there are some other useful things of uh, ways of opening a file. There are with the minus n. If you have some settings, custom settings or scripts that are loaded on every every time that Radare init, I will always show you how to do that just in a moment. If you have past the end, it just will ignore that. So you can uh, spawn a no bloated shell at all. And then we have R2 with one hyphen, which makes like 
you don't open directly a file. Uh, instead of that, you are look like uh, 512 megabytes uh, of, of data. So you can write directly on, on that, write a file or whatever. And if you want to just spawn a shell to play or whatever, you can happen to an, another iPhone and it will spawn a shell without any, any particular file or any particular memory allocation. Um, a funny thing about the, the last comment is that uh, it has a weird behavior, like when I was preparing that. And I just want to tell you because some of the basic stuff maybe has some weird behavior. If you find something that is not, I think you think that's wrong, just open an issue. And yeah, I opened an issue and it like 30 minutes it was solved. So it was upstreaming Git and that's it, no problem anymore. Uh, so the most important slide probably, uh, with full of course and so, so you can remember. Um, basically, <coughs> rather commands follow simple mnemonic rules. So everything is so intuitive. Uh, you have the S to seek for, a, for an address. You have PX for print hex dump, PD for print disassembly, WX for print uh, write hex pairs, WA to write assembly, uh, AA to analyze all code. Yeah, I'm sure you know that you can throw a bunch of A's that everyone uh, does that, but sometimes it's not strictly necessary and you will save a lot of time if you go just to what you need. And then obviously for quit. Um, I think the most important thing in Radar is that point in here, uh, pen the question mark to any comment to get help about it. So let's make a little very quick demo on that. We'll see. See it well. Okay, as you can see, the address that is shown here is where we are sick right now. We can see to another address. You see that it changed. We can uh, go back. We have that command uh, I just showed. So print hex dump and the number of bytes we want to print, maybe a little bit more. We can also print disassembly and pass the number of, of instructions we want to disassemble. Zit. And yeah, we can also analyze our code that will be really fast because it's not that only appending uh, another extra A, it's not that big analysis, but it will be useful and pretty everything you need for many cases. So, I mean, if you have really little binaries, you just throw a bunch of A's and you will have everything. But if you're dealing with some big stuff, maybe you want to make some manual analysis with manual. Um, so just go what you, to what you need because you will save a lot of time. Uh, we can quit with Q. And if you want to, to write in here, I will obviously make a copy of that. We have to open with the W flag, so we are allowed to, to write. I indeed, I will show you if we don't uh, write it. Uh, mm. We can print the hexam just one byte. We want to write uh, one, one, yeah. We want to write one byte as a hex pair. Um, fail to write. It cannot write if it's not open with the W flag. So just quit. Open with dot flag, and that will be it. That's it. Okay, same with the other ones. Uh, as I said, depending on question mark is really, really useful. Uh, I mean, if you are 
just you want to print this assembly, okay, but you want to know all the options you have here, just append a question mark, press enter, you will have all the information about subcommands and wh what is the usage and what are the subcommands that are inside the, all the PD. And you, if you, you can go through them and keep appending question marks until you get what you want. And we have also a quite useful, uh, quite useful modificator, which is the, the arroba. Um, you can temporarily seek with, with that. That means if you are, for example, we have, we analyze the code, okay. And then we have flags for some of the functions or some of the sections of the, of the binary, for example, the main. Uh, we want to print this assembly of the function main, but we don't want to seek them, uh, seek, seek to that address. I mean, we want to stay on the address we are, that is the entry point, because we are interested in keeping it here. So we can just see what we can do. Print this assembly, okay. What are the options? You can see that we, ca we have PDF, which is this assembly of function, following the mnemonic rules I just told you. So we can print this assembly function, Okay, so where we are just, where, where, what, which function are we disassembling? Okay, we can make a temporary seek to main. Main is just a, a flag for the offset where the main uh, function is. So we'll disassemble all the main function, this issue like that. But we are still seeked, we are still seeked at the, at the same address. We didn't move this, that seek. So many handy tricks I use a lot, and I think they are, we did, with that you, you are pretty safe of almost everything. If you append a J, um, you can have JSON output for almost any command. Um, so for example, we have the I a command, which is the, which is the command which gives us information of the binary, is indeed the same as Rabin2. Uh, it has all the capabilities of Rabin2, but as I told you before, it's included in the radar to shell. We can use it as a Rabin2 as a standalone uh, binary, or we can, if we spawn a shell and during the session we want to know the information, we don't have to go, go up to the system shell. If we can see all the information of the binaries directly with the eyes of commands. Say we open a question mark, we see a lot of options. So for example, I have here to show strings. Oops, sorry. That's not strings. That's all the strings with the offsets, where are they, the sections. So if we append J, we'll have this information in JSON. So yeah, there is, it is not really readable, but it poor JSON, so you can pass it any way you want, but if you want to read it, like, okay, I don't want to trade this data um, out of radar, I just want to read what's the information in a cool way, <coughs> you have that modification, that modificator that, oops, makes more sense when we know the grep, but it's simple like. <laughs> mm -hmm. We'll give you just everything with colors, with indentation and so. Okay, you can also append um, many, many commands a queue for quiet output, so the same. You see that in strings we have a lot of information, but if we, buy, we want just more quiet output, we just append a queue and, and that's it. Then we can pipe to shell commands. We can escape uh, temporarily to the to the system shell opening an exclamation mark. And there is also that, uh, that symbol, I don't, really don't know how, it, how it's named, but you, you see it. Uh, that it's, it's used for, it's in the internal grep. So Rada2 has an internal grep implemented. Uh, why to do that is, okay, grep is a really useful tool. Uh, the, implement, the implementation of grep is not the same across all systems, and there are some systems, I think, like BCBox or so, that did not have grep indeed. So you have a, rather a shell, in, you have a grep uh, built in. 
Okay, that's it. Some more useful things to, to take into account are the visual modes and the graph views. So you can see you want um, more kind of interactive interface to play with. You can go to the visual mode, it just, it's just like that. V. You get the visual mode. Here you can scroll down, up. You can change everything with P, as I said here. You change the print mode, there is the assembly. You can see also the registers and so on. And if you want to run an R2 command uh, from the visual mode, you just append uh, to point. So the other interesting stuff, oops. Other interesting stuff is the graph view. I will seek to main before I think. The graph view will show just if you do some reversing, you will be really used to uh, see graphs of how functions are, um, the flow of the functions of conditional jumping and so. So that's implemented too. Uh, you can access that just with double V. It's really, really useful if you are trying to track some uh, flow of, of, uh, of just a snippet of code or so. Uh, the point is that you have to be seeked on instead of function or it won't show anything. So now we are main here. So that's it. We can make zoom in, out, you can see really fancy things. And you can move uh, with arrows or also the, the cool way of moving. Uh, across screens, and yeah, that's the zoom too. Okay, we go to the configuration. Uh, under the e commands, you have a lot of con configurations to tune rather too. Uh, I won't go to all of them, you can, you can check them out, but I will show you some of them that I think are most useful. Uh, probably, mm, let me reopen that. If I, you will see. I will open without parsing any of my configuration uh, script and so. Okay, the first thing you see is that the color change. One of the things we can do is change the color map, change the intensity of color. So you see here that, uh, okay, we'll go. The enable true color, put it to three, and the use UTF egg charts, I think that will be mandatory. They are not by default. Uh, because there are um, some weird systems don't have support for that yet, but 99% have, and it's a really big improve. So use that. Um, I will show you what they made. So, for example, now just see that it's in the colors are uh, not true color at zero, zero value. So if we um, here. Just by making it. It's very, very colorful, very, very easy to read. And basically, uh, what this option does is enable support for more uh, bit space of colors. The UTF-8 is for, um, OK, we see the disassemble that. Maybe a little more. You see all those fancy arrows here made with ASCII art. So if we enable UTF-8, we will see all that arrows, all that indication also in the pipes of the graph view and so, uh, really um, more human readable and, and very, very pretty. Um, yeah, see that arrows now. I think those should be like by default by 99% of people. And there are other two that I found really useful. If you are uh, just starting to doing some reversing or you are into a new architecture, you don't know really well 
the, the assembly of that architecture, just enable ASM describe and you will have uh, literally a description of what is doing each instruction you are disassembling, I will show you. I have to make it a little, won't be a mess. Not. So I don't expect you to read, but you have literally what the hell is each instruction doing. So you can see a bunch of knobs, no operation, uh, moves, moves data from source to desk, uh, set a flag, jump short. So that's really useful if you are into a new architecture or so, or you are just, okay, what's, what the hell is going on here? I'm not understanding well this weird assembly. So that's really useful. And the other one is, okay, you're, you open the file without write mode and you want to try if applying a patch uh, changes well what you're trying to, to achieve. So you can enable the IO cache. This will let you make kind of a temporal write. So inside your session, you will see that it has been overwritten, but the file in this will not be overwritten. So you can play with that. Uh, the funny story of that is that if you have some of the, the commands of configurations that the most you prefer, uh, you can add it to a file, which is like an init file on your home. And you can put it there, your favorite commands, so they will be loaded by default anytime you, you spawn a radar to shell. So I will show you mine. I, I think I just have the true color and the UTF charts. Um, So that's it, it's just a text file, which has literally one command uh, on its line, one configuration command on its line, and those will be loaded by default when you spawn a radar to shell. I think those two are mandatory. I mean, on 99% systems, that will work and that will improve uh, your feeling with radar like a lot. Um, if you are making a presentation and showing radar, having uh, call to three, it's like needed. <laughs> okay, so I will go really quickly so to some more features that has radar, but I will not explain them in very detail. There will be a lot of talks explaining those topics. Um, the scripting, okay, there are many bindings for many languages. There are many bindings for many languages. You have, they are here at least, but this is not exhaustive. The point is that that bindings are not really maintained. There is, really, there is no one using it, I think. There was like that old uh, user interface called Boken, which was using the, the Python API, but it's not used anymore. I mean, it has been kind of non-officially deprecated in favor of R2Pipe, which is, uh, it's fantastic. I mean, you just need to know Radaria and that's it, R2Pipe. Install R2 pipe, uh, you input R2 commands, you get as an output R2 output, that's it. You can install it in Python with, pi with pip, and you only have those commands. Um, the open, to open a file, uh, cmd, uh, to execute a command, and you will have the output, a string. Uh, one cool thing is that you can have JSON deserialization to native objects with that. If you have a, you pass a command with JSON output, you mean, I mean, appending that J, I told you before, and you call it instead of cmd, cmdj, you will have JSON deserialization. What does that mean? That if you have a, I think I can make a really quick example of that. You see it well, or bigger? Yeah, okay, that's fine. For example, uh, the strings we've seen before. That's it, it's a bunch of obviously raw data. But if we call J, it gives us kind of JSON 
but it's we can see the type data here. And it's a string. But if we have a JSON output from radar and we call it with uh, CMDJ, what we will get is, okay, I will show you that first. That's a native dictionary of Python. So it makes JSON the serialization you can get from JSON to native objects or many of the languages supported by Air2Pipe. Uh, you, can, you can trust me, but I want to show you that. I, sorry, it's a list in that case. But yeah, native objects. That's really cool of R2Pipe. And that's it. You know, some rather command, just throw it with Python, get the output, parse it as you want. Uh, debugging. So yeah, I talked before that it has some debug features. I won't talk that much about debugging because it will, should be a really, really longer talk and I hope that will, I'm on time yet. Okay, so just, you have low level debugging. It's not aiming to replace source code debugging or other debuggers. You can access the options of debugging under the D command of debug. So I will just show you that you, you can list everything. I will just spawn a shell without opening everything. Open that D, you have all the debug options. Okay, so you can play with that. Simple commands I want to show you, just, just to insist in the fact that everything are simple mnemonics. You got uh, D for all the debug commands and the sub commands are, okay, set breakpoint, so breakpoint with a B, continue with a C, step with, a, with an S. So everything works like that. And I just wanted to, to show you that the visual Tile visual mode is extremely useful here. So I'm opening a... Tile visual mode, you can access with a V, which is the visual mode, and then exclamation mark. And I'm saying that it's extremely useful and you will see your way. Okay, you have the disassembly, you have the symbol, the stack references, the registers, and the register references. You can play with that. And you can obviously debug on that on that screen. There are also many other backends for make debugging. Uh, instead of making the, the native rather debug, you can have support for GDB in the core, or you can install, for example, R2Frida via R2PM, which is the package management system I told you before. Um, so yeah, you can have, for example, in R2Frida, you have a memory, you have access to the memory space of a of an executing process where if Frida is attached to, so you can do really, really, really fancy stuff there. And it's basically for binary instrumentation, hooking and so. Um, other cool feature that I really don't use that much, probably because I don't understand it really well yet. <laughs> uh, it's a seal, it's the uh, backend where the art bots and so are running is the Emulation of Rather 2. It stands for Evaluable Strings Intermediate Language. It's just a standard inter intermediate language in R2. Uh, so, cool stuff here is that this instruction is translated into a single string in a stack based uh, format. It can be really useful for emulation and assisted debugging. Uh, you can search expre expressions, you can predict jumps, you can see what the instructions that are going to be executed will be executed, are, will, what will be their result. So it's really, really useful, and it's a, I think it's an underrated uh, option, and I should know more about that for sure. There is the, the A for code emulation, so you can have here all the options, and uh, Condred will be making a, a talk explaining a, a seal, so see if you are interested in emulation of capabilities of Radare, just attend that Con Condred's talk. Yeah, he will explain, he will make a whole talk about the seal, so you will learn a lot on that. So just to be ending, I will go through some, very few, but some myths around Radare. So probably, I hope to demystify them, at least most. So, the favorite one of everyone, yeah. I, I'm sure you see that picture a ton of times, uh, but it's cool. 
I'm not really of the opinion on that, but I understand the feeling. Um, the point is, Rudder 2 is difficult, there are many commands. Yeah, there are many commands, it's difficult. Depends on your background. If you're used to Unix toolchain and working with, mm, I mean, Unix shell kind of tools, it's, it's really familiar. Point is, with the commands I showed you before, which are like 10, you can make 90% of the basic stuff and you can append uh, the question mark and you will see, oh, that's uh, a cool option I had. Just read, okay, th that's fine. We can make almost everything just with that basic commands, appending a question mark for inline help, and that will be it. Obviously, there are very advanced ways of make one-liners very, very fancy that makes a ton of things, but that's not the key of people that are just um, starting with that. I mean, you can make almost everything. You can make step by step, knowing what you're doing. And after some time, maybe you can start appending some fancy modificators, making some fancy one-liners, but that's not the, the, the key. Uh, yeah, and I, 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 I know I insist that much, but seriously, append a question mark to everything. In the, indeed, if you put a question mark without anything, we show you general all the commands, you can go iterating over them to see all the options. You have inline, inline help for every one of, that, of those. So I, I think that that myth can be some kind of solved. The other, there was another myth, I think it's, it's getting less and less myth, but yeah, there are still people that think that scripting is really hard with Radar 2. I just show you r 2 pipe. I think I don't have to say anything else. I mean, just open a file, throw Radar command, get the output, treat it as you want. And sure, I recommend you that you forget about native bindings and APIs. Um, just use r 2 pipe. It's much more simple. It's, always up to date because it it gets the, well, always up to date uh, if you have Radari up updated, of course. Um, if you know Radari, you've ha you know how to use R2Pipe, and yeah, that's where Radari 2 meets Python with Pancake hates it, but I think most of you will appreciate it. And there is no user interface. At that point, I think that everyone also knows Qter, but just in case someone doesn't know it yet, uh, it's a C++ and Qt uh, user interface built on top of Radare. Uh, I'm not a user of Qter, I must admit. I'm more comfortable with the shell, but it's really fun and it's really cool. You can, you can check it out. There are the, uh, some of the core developers in here. There will be also a talk about Qter by, by Sharkes, so ping him or attend to, to, his talk, to his talk if you want to know more. And Okay, there is the other thing. There is no documentation. Yeah, the, the first one is my preferred. It's already documented in C. So yeah, you know to read C, just read the code. Uh, okay, not, not everyone is able to read C that fast and understand it that well. But you can, you can go to the code. It's a good way to, to understand things. There, are also, there is also the radar to book where, where we have some printed versions for winners of prizes and so. And there is also that other book called Rather Explorations, which is really cool. Um, okay, but no, seriously, where is the documentation? So, yeah, have a little surprise. <coughs> um, I will present you R2Doku. Uh, I've been working on that, mostly thinking about that, that really implementing it. Um, Mostly thinking because I think Radar needs uh, some kind of documentation, but what kind of documentation to not replace the R2 book, not replace the ton of blog posts that are posted, and it was not that easy to decide uh, what to go for. So I just stick with the easiest, easiest thing and, um, and the same purpose of this talk, just approaching the Radar for the beginners, I think that uh, we can build a, an r doku not aiming to replace the r book, not aiming to be a full reference or full um, developing reference, at least yet. And I want it to just cover the common, base, uh, common the, the installation, the very basics. So <coughs> why I did that is because 
I think I have internet I can show you, indeed. Uh, yeah. Here you are, the Radar website. So you heard about Radar and you go to the Radar website, and then you see uh, what kind of, seems like documentation, okay, you go there and you, holy shit, where is the documentation? And after some reading, you found that, well, I think there is a book, oh, that's a PDF, well, it's Radar 1, what the hell is Radar 1? Uh, oh, there is an updated book, uh, maybe I will stick with that, you are lucky if you go into, through here, you open a book, and, okay, introduction, blah, 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 okay, whoa, tell me the history, yeah, it's, it's really cool, but, okay, the framework, that, those are the tools, but the hell, how, how do you get that, I mean, yeah, you go to download Radar and you have all of that to just install Radar. And until you start uh, making your first steps, you probably are lost. Um, so I think we need a proper way to, to make it easier for beginners to start with that. Um, my intention is to be able to just go to a Radar website, click one, do one click, get it installed, get it running your first commands, and just then you can go to your site to document yourself even more. Um, also, as I told, I think that R2 sh uh, Radar should be, and it really can be much more beginner friendly. And I'm there is the opportunity to make that now because there is a website that ought to be updated soon, or hopefully soon, that it's indeed in a beta. Uh, so I think that can fit really well on a new website to have uh, cool documentation for everyone just starting. And that's it, some points of that. It's still a work in progress, it's not even finished, but there are the old structure and many things are, are already written. Uh, as said, it will be hopefully available with the, with the website update running. I don't know really when, but hopefully soon. And yeah, I'm totally open to suggestions to people who want to discuss it. I have, uh, have a sketch of that in here. And it's like a call of volunteers if you wanna play with, with me. Uh, making all the details and okay, that maybe we can put that point in here or write this in that way. So I'm really open to that. Uh, here you are some screenshots of what is going on. Okay, just this is all the hard text you have and then okay, install and play. That's it. Uh, the quick start is already I made in a way that you can follow one command, uh, one command uh, after each other uh, with no problem, you, there is there is no uh, hidden steps here, so you can follow just all the commands. You will see what is printed here. So uh, hopefully it will be updated with regularly with all the all the new versions. But that that that's only the the very basic. So I don't think there will be a quick refactor on how to print this assembly. And that's it. Um, I just want to give you some more resources in case you're interested. I stole the books I, I said you before, the Art2 book and the Art2 Exploration, really, really good resources. Uh, talks, there are tons of them, just make a quick search, you will find a ton. Um, and also art 2 talks from all editions are uploaded a few weeks after the Congress. There are lots of blog posts. I believe this is not an non-exhaustive list. Uh, there is the official blog post rather today. It's not updated really really frequently, but I think a couple of days ago there was an update in some bioinformatics post by Brainstorm, which is really, really cool. And there is also, okay, I just put a, a random blog from my friend Itai, who I think is here. And he has some, some walkthroughs on Radar, which are really, really useful, and some nice uh, examples. Then if you want uh, unit support, you want help, there is the IRC channel at Freenode, and there is the Telegram channel. Uh, both are binded, so uh, Bridget, so you are right from one, you get the answer to the other one. And of course, I know you know that if you are here, but as many people on the internet could be seeing that, uh, a really good way to know more is attend to our to come, talk to people, uh, share your knowledge, learn from others, teach the others. It's really, it's really the best way. 
uh, to grow within the community. Uh, some final advices I would like to, to give you from, I said, a non-expert reverse engineer and non-expert Radar 2 user, but there are many ways to collaborate with Radar. I mean, not everyone has to write code, and not everyone knows who write to good C code, at least. I mean, I'm not a good C programmer. I know C, but I'm not that used to C. And for the one just starting, uh, don't be afraid. I mean, get dirty as soon as possible. That's why I made that documentation. I mean, I just want you to go to Radare, make one click, and start. Install and start doing shit. And as for help, as for help, uh, on the radar, on the radar channels on Telegram, on IRC, there is there is no problem. I mean, there are no stupid questions. If you don't know something, just ask for help. And if you think something is wrong or something doesn't behave like you think it has to or you expect it to be, don't be shy. It's just okay. Put a message if you are not just so sure about your your thing. But you can feel an issue on GitHub, and if you are um, brave enough, you can send a pull request. It will be reviewed. Uh, be sure to be using the last version of Radar, of course, but that's it. And just a last footnote, keep appending a question mark to, to every comment for seeing co subcommands and inline help is like the most useful thing you'll see. And that's it. If you have any question, I, I'm open to, to hear you. I don't know how we go of time. I think we are a little out of time, but if you have some question, and now they will be uh, at the conference the, the rest of the day and tomorrow also, so you can ping me without any problem. So thank you very much.